Yeah, I kind of agree. And last game, we didn't really see a lot of the like, good connections between like the Hoodwink uh, Sharpshooter and like Mars Arena. It seems like almost every single one of them missed. Um, so, I mean, maybe they can get their timing down a little bit better this time. But if they actually do manage to get that combo to work, like they can find some good kills. But you're right. I, I feel like they just picked a, a real kind of run at you, dive these heroes type of lineup. And Enigma just doesn't need a blink this game it seems like he's just gonna have to get like a bkb and just wait for them to run into you well and of course it's like you're always strapped versus the rubik but eventually you do get a lincoln sphere and then eventually the matchup doesn't matter you just get it popped with the spell block and then suddenly you're absolutely fine and unless there's like an abyssal blade you know hanging around somewhere this is going to be kind of tough I, I feel like if i'm ravens Maybe I get a respect ban onto a hero like the pango just not giving them yet again another hero that's going to run at them but at the same time, five minutes are pretty flexible. The DK and the Death Prophet, they can really realistically go to any of the lanes. I feel like eventually we're going to have to see them make them call. But that's where with those both the DK and the Death Prophet, I am worried a little bit about the cheese here from Ravens because they do have ultimate last pick. Five minutes kind of have to make the safe bet call. And then you kind of get whatever you want on Nango Flow and don't really have to care about it. Not to mention, this TB pick is also just so good. If it was hard to approach before because there's an Enigma in the game, now you're going to have to play versus a Terrorblade, metaing, hitting you whenever you go into any tower push ever. Puts a little bit of a question mark for the Dawnbreaker. I feel like it's probably Dismart Dawnbreaker, though, at this point. This kind of falls in line with the yeah. style of heroes he's played so far, but at the same time, I feel like they're just really satisfied with what's going on here. Because I think 5-man minus, they need one more hero that's just going to ape in with the rest of them, but they also kind of need a little bit more team fight right now, because as they currently stand, they're, it feels very single target. It feels like aside from the silence, they're going to be able to choose one target, kill that target, and then they're kind of in over their heads whenever it comes to killing the rest of Raven's lineup, where Ravens are the exact opposite of that. I think if they can get one more hero, it's going to feel good, but if they can't, then... I don't know. The lineup just seems very difficult to execute. Yeah, you're right. I agree. Um, they are going to go ahead and ban out the faces, boy. Ooh, okay, so it gives them that's some a team really fight. Good ban. That'd have been a really good one. Yeah, into the Terra Blade as well. You do have last pick, like you're saying, on Ravens. I'm just curious, like what they want to grab for their mid lane here, because you are into the DK, which is just one of those heroes that takes your tower if you leave the lane. He's really hard to punish to get him out of the lane in the first place. They did go ahead and ban out the Necrophos, which is a great counter to him. But I feel like there's got to be something I'm missing uh, out of the mid lane here that they can still come up with. Um, five minutes though, carry wise, what can they pick that actually still beats the Terror Blade and doesn't lose to this Enigma lane? Yeah, Gyro. Oh, I didn't want to say it because I, I don't like Gyro versus Terrorblade at all, but yeah. it's one of the only heroes they can still pick versus Enigma in the lane, and it is pretty much assuredly going to be a three Enigma, but I, Gyro just feels so Ten tough. Seconds. This is like the elimination hero at TI qualities as well. It was like, you are running out of carries, you have no other options, you have to pick something in the lane versus Enigma, so you pick Gyrocopter, and then you still lose to Enigma because it just doesn't matter. Because even though you can lane very well versus Enigma, it's just tough. And now, of course, if this lane and this game goes too long, as we keep on saying for Ravens, they are so comfortable with taking this late. They do not care. They don't lose late. They are going to be very happy taking you anywhere. And now Nengo Flow, he's got a slew of heroes to play. He knows he has to play either versus a DK or a Death Prophet. Probably versus, I want to say, a Death Prophet, just because... Then you don't have to worry about the double range setup that can sometimes feel weird versus Terrorblade especially, but that's where he kind of has Dealer's pick here. Even though they did do kind of a good job banning out the Ember, I feel giving him that hero again would have been a big mistake. And I'm excited. I kind of wanted 5-man Mice to pick the Beast, to be honest, and then do something weird with like a safe lane DK, but they get the Beast last pick. I mean, Ravens just have a fun lineup, I'm not going to lie. This is just such a sick Primal Beast pick because it beats both of these heroes mid. Like, I've played the DK into Primal Beast before. It's, it's tolerable because you just have to Dragon Tail him every single time he pops Trample. And then that's about all you can do. But you don't really... It is going to be RL mid on the Dragon Knight. And Lies will be mm -hmm. taking the Death Prophet off lane. So it is one of those things that, like, every time he pops Trample, you just have to Dragon Tail him. But you don't really have a ton of damage to work with to actually outlast hit the Primal Beast just because he comes to lane with like 62 base plus 10 bonus and a Quelling Blade and you're just like, cool. This guy hits for like 30 more damage than me. Yeah, as well as it's... I, 
I don't want to say it because it sounds like too much of a blanket statement, but it's like an ungankable mid lane, right? You you just yeah. can't do anything to him. What what is Rubik uh, plus Hoodwink really going to do? Of course, once you do have the level six on the DK, of course that lane gets a little bit more difficult. That's where Nengo Flow has to put maybe a little bit more effort into his region, but then I feel like Nengo Flow just gets levels and then causes chaos. And I think especially for Lies, anytime Nengo Flow isn't showing on the map, it could just simply be Kara glimpsing you near the tower, <laughs> TP in, anybody near a tower is not safe from this game. And I don't know, seeing Primal Beast with farm, it's just going to be fun, to be honest. All right, well, we'll see how it goes. Based on the draft, I'm, I'm once again just looking at Ravens here, feeling like they've got everything that they need to, to close this one out. Um, I just am not a huge fan of the gyrocopter into the terror blade. Like people, like you said, try to pick this. Sometimes it works, but a lot of times it doesn't. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to feel like, uh, Ravens again, have the better draft this time. Yeah. And it's always just one of those things where even if you do get the BKB and the Ags and a good timing, that's your moment to kill the Terror Blade and then win the matchup. But if he has a Manta Scotty to your BKB Ags, well, then the TV wins the matchup and then you never come back from that. And it's where I think as soon as Dad starts getting that a little bit of a gap in between him and the Gyro, it might already be kind of problem city here. Not to mention, Ravens just have such a beastly team fight. And again, 5 yeah. Minus will have that more difficult time just finding the execution it's where they have to have that like multiple jump going for them where they end up stunning three individual targets as opposed to having any aoe in their draft it's just going to be hard to play and i think that's where whenever these pushes do eventually come that's where you're really going to need to see them be very careful execution wise because all it takes is again one misspell and then suddenly it's another tool you don't have and you could very easily get run over I also just think Nengo Flow has the easiest time in the world on this beast. I feel like yep. there's just going to be him farming, pushing out the wave, not showing on the map, and then Five Man Midas, they got to respect that. And if they don't, well, they're going to get killed by him. Just 30 seconds now. Well, it'll be interesting to see what he does here in this mid lane. Like I said, uh, it's not completely unplayable from the DK just because, like, you do have Dragon Tail, and it's a really, really good value point, 2.25 seconds of just that trample duration completely removed and allows you to build a lot of space between you and the hero. So you don't really like worry about him actually killing you, but he can shove the lane and that is the problem. The begin. Oh, begin oh, dragon tail. See. Drops it right there. All right. It's pretty free, pretty easy. I do wonder, I, I feel like it's just gotta be the upper level one for Nengo, but it's gotta also be. see, yeah. Doesn't make it sense. It gives not you the to. this the extra ten damage is just so important when it comes to last hitting in the lane. And if RRL Dragon Tail is you, you just get a free uproar stack, and then you can also, you know, play off of like breathe fire harassments as well. You just have to have the damage bonus. That's not fun. I mean, even RRL needs to be careful at early levels, just not eating too much harass before he gets that region coming through. I feel like this lane could just become a spiral. I think just barely, though, he might not get a stack for every trade he makes, but at the same time, it should be pretty even. But it is just going to be farm time. I don't think either side can really put too much pressure on the other until that DK is level 6. Yeah. So we can talk about the side lanes. Bottom, we're going to see a lot of fighting here as we have the Terror Blade and the Disruptor up against the Death Prophet and the Rubik. Uh... So far, I mean, just in the health exchanges, you can see, like, Kara is just putting the beat down onto Skyward here, just constantly spamming out with the Thunder Strikes. Has four mangoes, and then they even have the Reflection as well. I mean, this is just Kara's brand at this point. Just comes to lane with a ton of mangoes and just starts dropping spells onto him. No, and I, I like it. It's a good look, because Kara's previous brand was, you know, dying 12 times on Enchantress, and then, you know, his team... Maybe winning, because he, he likes to die for vision, but this is him just kind of being the, the new bully. I don't want to say it sounds or feels like Bane, but that's kind of what it's like, and they hit level two, and okay. Yeah, that's the, the go time. That is an easy kill onto Lies, thanks to that kinetic field, and first blood into the hands of the Terra Blade. You are always happy about that. Oh, it's so simple. Is the Terra Blade's attack projectile, like, not showing for you sometimes? Here, I'm, I'm gonna check his color real quick. He has it the like the, uh, gem that has no color. 
It's the uh, it's crystalline blue. It's faint, but yeah, it's a it's a little bit uh, intriguing. I mean, prismatic gems have always been uh, interesting to say the least. Yeah. They should really have like more use of prismatic gems in Dota besides just Terrorblade Arcana, honestly. I think the coolest one uh, has always been techies because people don't even know that you can take the techies one out and just have a, a different color the uh, cart. Yeah. I always wanted the Techies Arcana, but it also used to change the color of one of the mines, didn't it? It did. I see. I like just being an elephant now. It's cheaper Not too. Plain. Dude, I love the elephant one. That one's so good. It's definitely not it should be pretty easy. Honestly, for both sides, eventually you do have enough damage with the fly cannon to kind of put pressure on, but you also have to make a pretty conscious choice on hard games. All your spells are pretty nice. But it also means that if you have to go back, he's even holding a lot of spells, just seeing if he wants to get two points in black immediately. He's trying to make the decision. He's still holding onto the rocket barrage skill, but he also knows that as soon as he does that, it just messes up your skill tree. Yeah. You don't want to be a 1 1 1 gyrocopter. Nobody does. Yeah, that's rough. Dude, it's, okay, it sounds like you're back. For some reason, uh, you got a little robotic there, but seems to be all good now. Ooh, nice body block there from Skyward Bottom. Actually sends Kara around to the other side and allows him to secure a kill. Okay, good. Well, well done. Meanwhile, top lane, oh, Dismar is in super deep here. It's only a matter of time, I think, before they find the kill. Bushwhack is available. He ends up turning it around onto the hoodwink, but just breaks the salve for that one. And he will come back and got to be a little bit careful here on Benjaz. Try to get a pull going. They've double stacked this large camp, which is pretty annoying for Argus to deal with, especially because they're pretty strong creeps. But oh, Lumio, unfortunately, loses the aggro there. But with the lane so far up, I mean, this is just typical Enigma gameplay. Lane, RL's just taking a ton of damage from this uh, level 3 trample. I'm surprised. Just soaked it entirely instead of going for the dragon tail. And he's just going to go ahead and onslaught onto the high ground and go take the enemy bounty rune as well. Very smart play there. It's such a cool hero. I love him. I love him so much. And bottom. Just caught. Trying to get something going. Trying to get that bounty rune. Stealing it away, but... I don't know, now you're giving Soul XP over to the Terra Blade. Wise is fine, kind of in the immediate, but I don't know, CS-wise, he definitely isn't. He lost so much from that first death. It really hasn't been pretty. It's always been a fight for catching up. I mean, in terms of CS, nothing really all that surprising, right? You, you have the Terra Blade sitting at the top. Mid lane is kind of just an even trade. Both of these boys just farming up, hitting creeps. I mean, IRL having 20 or having nine denies is actually pretty impressive, I think. Yeah, no, it's it's very nice. And you want to get that XP advantage over the Primal Beast. Of course, an Engo Flow is level six while IRL is only level five. But that's just because the waves just finally weren't meeting. But now that you are level six on that DK, Get the pressure going a little bit more. Of course, it is DK versus a guy with a bottle, so you're gonna see that rotation for the runes here in Skyward. Uh, all right, Dragon Tail damage out onto the disruptor, but of course there's that uh, pulverized to come through from the Primal Beast, and they will take down one as they turn their attention on over to the DK. Nango Flow doesn't really have many spells left, as he's just gonna walk it back towards the mid lane. And of course, top lane there is that illusion rune as they were unable to take it. So he gets full bottle nice. refill. He's chilling. <laughs> he gets his bottle refilled. Wastes a good portion, pretty much half of RRL's DK form as well, where he's just forced to kind of passively last hit. He might get a few clicks on that tower, but not how you would have wanted to spend your first DK form as well, especially because he has a flag bearer and a double wave, but yeah, trying to make the most of it. Just unfortunate that that rotation came in a little bit uh, too late, but also where Nengo Flow He's gonna be level seven just a second here, four points up in trample. Everybody on the map needs to be so scared, but because Skyward was out of the lane for so long, they just killed the Death Prophet again. He is still struggling so much. He's doubled over in CS. 
Yeah, he's really struggling. Speaking of struggling, top lane Lumi takes a lot of damage here for the Dawn Breaker, but all to make space here for Benjaz. Uh -oh. And then there's the TP to the top lane, the big bad Primal Beast, but a ward did scout him. The question is, can Argus even get matters. out of here? <laughs> Ooh, there's your Pulverize on top of him. Great Bushwhack, but you're right, it didn't matter the damage there. The DK comes in, hits that Dragon Tail, but they're just gonna turn their attention again. Just distract play there. Dismar is soaking it for his team as the rest of them will be able to get away. They take down the gyro for the support once again. Yeah, and that is going to be, I think, the problem going forward. And you even saw there, they throw the bushwhack out, they throw the DK stun out, and then suddenly no, you're out of stunts. Right. You have nothing else you can do. And if Nengo Flow is just eating everything up, it just frees up the play of pretty much everybody else. Dismar gives him the bottle refill as well, and we'll see the eight minute rune. It's going to be a bit of a battle. I don't know if you can find this Aura. He's gonna pop Ooh, the DK invis. form. He does get the invis. Okay, that's convenient. Ooh, thankfully Kara doesn't have a sentry. <laughs> yeah, what I mean, it, I feel like the he, walk. he probably dies there if he didn't get an invis. No, that was pretty pretty darn fortunate here, even though, again, this mango flow doesn't even need any, uh, any of those stacks from the upper, even though he's sitting at five right now, but there you go, he's out. No threat, and now Argus, um, he's just walking to the support rotation. Yeah, he, came, he went from top dying there to bottom dying here, and Argus is uh, having a really rough game. The glimpse from Kara will pull Lumi right back into the hands of Ravens. So we have a Celestial Hammer. It's coming up in one, and that will be more than enough damage to finish him off as Dismar is now looking for Skyward up onto the side. He does have a stick to work with. They have Kinetic Field as well. Death Prophet is going to get scouted, TPing back in, though. We'll just decide to back away and he ends up dropping Exo right away. Kara, he's glimpsed. Goodbye. He's gone. Exo, uh, for what? Oh. Meanwhile, Skyward oh, no. now trapped here in this lane. And Dismar is going to claim another. You know, this, uh, I, I did play against a Disruptor recently and also forgot that Glimpse was a thing. Yeah, and that's just the saddest thing in the world because you end up going back top. Originally, I was going to say, well, Benjaz can just take the tower now because he's playing versus no one, but now there's an Exo Death Prophet sitting in front of his face, but that is your Exo now being pretty much completely wasted. Eli is just unable to really make anything happen. I think he did take a large camp stack, which was, you know, something to do. Cost for his, uh, his effort there, but... Yeah, no, not the prettiest thing in the world. Just kind of getting outplayed by Ravens there. And Dude. now, back again, yeah. <laughs> oh, glimpse in the mid lane there. Kara, level six on the Disruptor. Nice telekinesis there to buy some space for the Dragon Knight. So he is going to be fine. Scouts a haste rune in the top lane. But there is going to be the... Oh, he ends up canceling the Onslaught with a bottle. Nango Flow may not be super familiar with that interaction. They're going to be able to chase a little bit more, but RL just too much magic damage. Has to back on out. Yeah, yeah he's pressing to go literally down. anything during Onslaught will cancel it. But Black Hole Tomp, they killed the oh, Gyro yeah. again. And they get also... the Gyro again. Lumi ends up trading Shoot. there. Has a sharp shooter coming through. They end up canceling a TP, I believe, here to the top lane. And it's going to allow Benjaz to just TP home. Kill again. And actually, they kept it going in Engo Flow. With the stacks from the upper, just had enough damage. Skyward's really going to try and fiend for this kill. He has no mana, though. Oh, wait. He has uh, absolutely no mana. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but it is 11 minutes into the game, and this Terrorblade has 6,200 net worth. It's uh, slightly problematic. He just really hasn't been pushed outside pretty much anywhere. It's one of those situations where because this Death Prophet ulti hasn't been cast on that bottom tower, he has just not only taken over this entire bottom Radiant jungle, but gets the wave, even gets a little bit of what Argus would want to farm. And Argus is catching up a little bit. He's got a small Ancient stack here to farm, but he's level 7. And he's also getting ganked right now because they just will never let him up. And he might even just lose the stack. He's got four points in trample. I mean, I probably just dies. Oh, wow. no, he's getting greedy. He's trying to farm both. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, the four points in trample. It's pretty good. Argus is having a really rough game. Sharp Trigger, of course, not going to connect again. Dad, in the mid lane here, takes a, or in the triangle here, takes a lot of damage from the Rubik, but he's got a meta if he wants to commit it. He's just going to clean up the Ancient stack instead. God. The beast, it's a 5k the dog. gold lead already here, 12 minutes in. It's looking very oh, good it's... for Ravens. 
it's very, very tough for 5 min minus to really do anything now. Uh, it's going to become just a play to be made with lies. They need to get this uh, exorcism onto an either an objective or onto a hero. Because right now, I mean, they're trying to get the pressure going. Mid tower is going to take a lot of damage again. Doing a good job of keeping that card alive. But well, that's half HP and now RL has got to go the long way around. Nobody else is coming, though, from Ravens. This could be their first mistake here, but top lane, they're also making a play on the Gyro yet again. Do they have a glimpse? No, he was already glimpsed back in, and so... Looks like he's gonna be okay. Not farming, though. Definitely not farming. <laughs> no, the only hero on the map right now that is really farming is the Terrorblade. Everyone else looks like, uh, like a peasant in comparison. Yeah, he is, I guess, doubling over the entire dire team in net worth right now which is uh, tough to say he is actually the entire gold lead more or less right now yeah he is a manta terror blade with treads completed in 13 minutes man that has to be one of the fastest mantas i have ever seen i feel like that's some type of record i, I don't know it feels it feels like some type of record i'm not gonna lie but i don't know that's where they need to get this play going. And then Goflo's getting a lot of damage, but it's just a lot of damage. You need even more oh, damage to kill Primal Bees. Tree there. And that's the thing, you're playing into a Disruptor. You make a little bit of an overextension. If you don't be able to secure that kill, they will punish you for it. Stolen uh, Solar Guardian, interesting. Able to keep Lumiere alive, but Skyward just comes in. He's gonna regret that one as the Trample will finish him off. They've caught RRL into the mid lane. There's the Black Hole from Ben Jazz. They, I mean, they just don't hold back. Yeah, and there's no glyph. They can't really defend that. Unfortunately, Argus, after getting pushed out of top lane and making the rotation all the way back into his triangle, discovers that everything is blocked still. Both sentries miss the, his ancient oh, camp, unfortunately. No. So uh, everything is just not coming up for the gyro. And they immediately rotate from that mid tower into Roche 14 minutes into the game with Benjaz having a full Wraith pack as well. I mean, the timings are just out of control. Everything is yeah. going so well. That's the thing that is nuts to me is it's like, it's not just the Terrorblade who has a ton of net worth. Like Benjaz, like you said, has a Wraith pack on an offlane Enigma at like 14 minutes into the game. Like, I don't know who they fight into. Bottom lane. Death Prophet finds a kill there on Takara, but Dismark comes in. Might regret. Oh no, he's definitely not regretting. There's Nango Flow. He's got an Arcane Rune on this usage, but there's going to be a decent chunk of damage coming in from Argus. They actually got to get him. He has the Aegis. Dismar is here. Skyward with a trample. Not quite as effective, sir. You don't have as much damage. And uh, he's going to show him how it's really done here. Oh, double kill. Okay. Gets the trade, you know, I, something, you know, they get the Aegis. They honestly catch him in a pretty big mistake there, you know. Oh, they don't get glimpse. to sync up their abilities, but Wait. yeah, RL, yeah, they'll place the ward perfect in the nighttime, and that's a dead DK. Yeah, they're just unable to find anything. This mid tower, I mean, <laughs> he's just been trying so hard this game to take it down, but every single time it's just responses from Ravens to punish him for it. Yeah, and uh, looking at the DK's item build, he's got the Sun. He's just trying to be tanky, but I know yet again, I think Five Men Midas has itemized for the desperation plays. They're just trying to do one thing right, but you delay your Blink Dagger. You don't have an initiator now. You don't have an initiator on anyone in your team. It's just kind of that oddity as, ooh, Nengofu almost killed Argus just straight up there. Probably with the Onslaught, honestly. Yeah, he is going the Chrysalis build on the uh, Gyro, which I do like. But yeah, it, it does feel really rough. He is so high level on Nango Flow, like out of this mid lane. Primal Beast, he just has a ton of net worth to work with. He's going to have that BKB relatively soon. Yeah, the burst damage of Onslaught Trample. If you get caught out and you have no way to get away, like, you're dead. Yeah, and it's where the BKB is timings. You'd hope that that's going to be kind of there as... Oh, Skyward is in. He's on Nengo Flow. He's yeah. tossing him back as well. What? Oh no, he popped the Invis rune. Okay, he's gonna need some help here and fast. In comes Dismar. The Sharpshooter off the mark again. And the with this, they might turn it around. 
That's the second time. I mean, this is, again, just like someone who probably hasn't played a lot of Primal Beast. But uh, it's the same thing. He popped the uh, invis after activating Onslaught. Just instantly cancels the ability. Black hole in one. Watch Black the Enigma. Indeed. They're trying Dang. to bait this out. Big silence coming through, though, as they're still holding a mango, uh, Nango Float in place. So there's just no damage to get on top of them. Instead, they just go ahead and Black Hole the Dragon Knight. Why not? Dragon Tail does come out. He's managed to survive this long. Skyward on the backside, pulverizing Dismar. Able to survive for the moment, but finally does go down. And Dragonite is now chasing from Arbor. He's going to go right into the hands of the Terra Blade instead. And he'll be able to pick that one up pretty easily. Glimpse here from the Death Prophet. Ooh, nice bushwhack to save him. Dismar absolutely would have been able to cancel that TP. So Lumi at least coming through at the end there. Yeah, and they get the punish on 5 men minus. They get the tier 1 as well. Still lose the DK, which is a little bit sad, but punishing the Primal Beast for sticking around on only half HP is pretty nice. And I think if that tower is maybe 100 HP more, then maybe that baits out enough time for that Black Hole to feel a little bit more impactful. For a second there, I felt like they were going to get the Black Hole and the DK and the Death Prof, and that just would have been all she wrote. But yeah. instead, getting the Primal Beast kill is definitely pretty big. He's going to have BKB now, though, which is, you know, going to be slightly problematic, but... Again, 5 men Midas, in their ability to sometimes find these chaotic picks, it allows them to farm. And honestly, the person who got the most out of that, even though we only got to see a glimpse of him, Argus farmed that entire bottom area. They finally unblocked the Ancients. He got a lot of personal time. A 7k lead still, even after, you know, what looked like some signs of life coming through from 5 men Midas, but... Dismar has a mech going for a blink dagger next here on the Dawnbreaker. And usually it's just like we see the Aghanim's rush or the Holy Locket, right? Yeah, and it's a little bit weird. I'm not going to lie for Dismar. I, I feel like that's where maybe he just wants it to have another support jump the back line. Somebody to play right up there with Nengo Flow. But at the same time, uh, I kind of expect different items especially yeah. because he you can kind of turn yourself into more of a core position if you really want to he's kind of stamping his feet in the ground saying that i am just going to be a support this game but honestly there's not too much that ravens can do wrong they just have so much of a surplus still that we'll see if the mistakes kind of end up biting them in a bit but as long as their main three continue to make the correct decisions and don't get too greedy with their builds then Hold the it's going to be very Midas. difficult they're gonna get gonna right on, on top of the Terra Blade. This is the perfect kill if they can get it, but the Manta Dawn... Oh, he didn't even Dragon Tail, actually. RRL in some trouble here. Is smart, just stunned underneath everything. They're gonna continue the chase here with the BKB from Lies, but big Static Storm holding two in place, and the BKB from Nango Flow is able to just take down the Gyro. And the Glimpse able to try and save the Death... or save the Terra Blade from the Death Prophet for now. He's gotta be able to find himself a Sunder target, and he will just use it Nicely done. Primal Beast pushed away. Heroes falling one by one as the Scotty gets delivered for the Terra Blade and Skyward. Not be able to TP on home as the Glimpse will be there to cancel. Terra Blade is just too big, man. If this was... Like, if he was, like, relatively even in net worth, right? He had, like, 5k less net worth. This Terra Blade's easily dead. But he is just way too far. Oh, if he had 5k less net worth, he'd probably have, uh... Even 500, you just would have one less ultimate orb, and then that's probably looking like a kill, but that's also just perfect from Kara. Finding the cutoff angle, chopping off both the Gyrocopter and the DK from joining up with the fight, and then unfortunately, Wise, who was using his BKB timing, again, making the correct play, it just kind of gets punished for being that far forward. And even though Dad did have to uh, sunder the buyback on the, on the Dawnbreaker and even kills his teammate, it's just a little bit too much at this point. Also, a team fight won completely without Black Hole, so five men Midas aren't too careful and they do just feel like they can take this next engagement. Black Hole is still there. They need to be very aware of the ability of Benjus to just kind of turn this game around. There's no yeah. meta, so they want to make a play happen, but unfortunately, I just feel like they're a little bit paralyzed right now with what they can actually do. Yeah, this Terra Blade, like, we were talking early on about the Gyrocopter and Terra Blade matchup, and it's just you kind of just put the nail on the head where you're like, once he has Scotty Manta, the matchup seems basically over for the Gyrocopter. And it's like, it's 20 minutes into the game, he had Scotty Manta. <laughs> well, yeah, and in that 
In that hypothetical, Jair also has a BKB, right? But yeah, you know, e everything is luxury. Everything is luxury at this point. I really just wonder what went so wrong with the Enigma lane, because I feel like that's a lane that sometimes Jairo can just win pretty much by himself, but I felt like Benjaz was just out farming and being fine. And okay, gotta cancel the charge. Doesn't want to go anywhere, but it's another interesting smoke up here. They've got pretty much everything on the five man Midas side. I don't think they look for this play mid, though. I feel like they should drag this engagement down towards bottom to run Ravens through their vision, but maybe they get car for free. Oh, or the not. jump in! Nango Flow catches four! Huge static storm as well. They're just all dead. Dude, that couldn't have been worse. You're like, oh, maybe they're going to get a good catch onto the Disruptor, but nope. There's wow. a monster just running through your team. Yeah, the dog just goes through the cruncher. He just goes through, he perma stuns him, he gets onto the only BKB target on five man Midas. Makes it impossible for him to use it because of the because of pulverize. I mean, couldn't have asked for a worse situation, honestly. And I don't know, that was the problem. I, I feel like if they drag the engagement down bottom, they can push towers. They have level two exo, they have level two DK form, but they just look for the pick instead. And I think that's where the game plan has really started to fall apart. They've got glyph. It's a little bit sad. They should be able to honestly hold on to it. If they glyph for the racks, there's no meta, and they should just back out on the Raven side, but... Man, you oh do man. pulverize on oh. Rubik. There it is. Yeah, it does pull this Enigma pretty far back under the towers, and it will be enough to kill him. Nango Flow now on the run without BKB and lies. He should be able to just chase him down here. He's gonna get him. All right, yeah, you gotta be very careful not to give pulverize to the Rubik. It's basically an anti-blink. Yeah, the, uh... Just the additional someone, cast range. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just like, because it's not like they stay 600 units away. They teleport to Rubik. So it's kind of like having Marcy dispose, but you're just stunned for three seconds. Pretty sick. I mean, Rubik's also got to be working out. It's the same slams, right? Pretty strong. Dude, yeah, it's a, it's a lot. And now, I mean... 10 seconds on Roche, that's going to be respawning. It's where five men Midas could probably look to take this next fight. Do have to wait for the Exo before they can even, you know, bat an eye at the pit. But again, kind of making some mistakes. This is the same thing that was happening in game one as well, where I think Nengo Flow gets a little bit too confident and then ends up throwing a little bit of gold <laughs> into five men Midas' pocket. But that's where he's not the one that needs to m make a mistake. Primal Beast can die another five times and then the game doesn't really matter. But if they can find TB, Dad is still very greedy. He still only has the Manta when it comes to dispelling silences, to living. There's no BKB in Q. He is just tanky and a huge damage dealer. They can somehow isolate him again. We could see them actually turn this game on its head, I think. But that is also implying that he doesn't get this next Aegis. Because if Ravens do find that for the Terra Blade then none of what I just said matters in the slightest because he will yeah. just kill you on the way to try and kill him. Absolutely. Man, just the raw damage output from this Terror Blade is going to just be absolutely wild in this next fight. Argy is going back for a Maelstrom into the uh, Mjolnir now that he has the Aghanim Scepter. I, I mean, it is going to be a lot of just damage going out in these fights right between the flat cannon of course just like the side gunner with like crit and maelstrom but i don't know if he's gonna have enough damage to burst down some of these heroes like they do have to find such a good pick minonet issues get... it seems from dad a little unfortunate there how close are we on some of these okay so we have agonim up there almost on primal beast and disruptor is about 1100 away from his no, it's not too bad. I mean, the Ags does so much damage. It's very obnoxious, actually. And of course, it makes it almost impossible for supports to play. You just cannot get anywhere near a team fight. It does also mean, though, that if somehow Skyward gets an Ags, you know, you'll uh, still uproar and then you'll be pounding out those same, uh, those same shockwaves. Could be a, a sick interaction. Right? Uh-oh. <laughs> they just scouted the Roche. Yeah, I was like, was that an illusion that scouted Roche? Yeah, it just barely timed out, so it wasn't in there for long, but... Well, five-man Midas, what do you think you can do? You don't have Exo. 
Can't really afford to give up the the Roche either, but I feel like this is just going to be them trying to make some farm time happen. They're getting some pretty big items, especially on the Gyrocopter. He's actually getting a pretty decent amount of farm now. Still getting dwarfed by the uh, Terrorblade, but can't really do much about that at this stage of the game. But that's going to be a free Aegis, a free Shard over for Dad. And a pretty big problem they still have to deal with. Engo Flow could die in the mid lane, but... That's also where they should know if they don't get this kill in five seconds, the rest of the line is going to be coming out of that pit. I'm trying to pull him though. Well, he pops the BKB, ends up just trampling away. Uh, I mean, he almost got the kill. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised. They could have gone for like the telekinesis first, then into the pulverize to just buy themselves a little bit more time. But if they had any help, that was a dead primal beast. No, yeah. I feel like that would have just been very important pick but getting the bkb also doesn't feel bad they did still get something for their troubles it's just unfortunate it wasn't anything more as bottom though yeah, might pick on right. the dismar perhaps maybe but in comes dad and he is well, very strong nice halberd there will catch the right terror blade but there's gonna be a glint pulling him right back in demon zeal very scary on the melee form of the terror blade as nango flow will finish off rrl and dan was looking for lumi but he's not gonna find him so Instead, just going to clean up the wave and continue pushing this towards the enemy base. And I believe that has a completed Daedalus coming. Oh, no, he went, yeah. he went back for the pike. Okay. Yeah, I, I think he wanted that Forest Staff again. And, of course, having Forest Staff versus the uh, the Hoodwink is always very important. Also, versus the Gyro, if you ever are just getting kind of casually harassed by the homing missile, you just pike it, you hit it, you can't really do much about it. And now, when it comes to approaching, Death Prophet can't even hope to walk up into this team fight. I don't even think... Okay, he does have a plate mail. He's got a little bit of armor to play around with, but even then, it's still going to feel nearly impossible to stay on these heroes. It's where you almost wish he could find an angle to get onto that backline somehow, but with the Wraith Pact going as well, I, there's just no way to get into this fight. And they know there's no Glyph for another minute here or so, so this is just free damage. Yeah. Baby meta cast here by Rubik. They're gonna do what damage they can. The trample will instantly pop that tree, but they get the sharpshooter after the dragon tail. Terribly managing to stay alive through this. They will take down the tier three tower. And of course the Sunder back onto his own ally as lies in some trouble here. Dad just chases right after it with the four staff, doesn't care. Dragon Tail does come out into the call down. Argus trying to do what he can, but Terribly is still alive. And there's the black hole from Ben Jazz. You thought you might be able to bring down the Terra Blade once, but you would be fooled as it's just going to be a five hero wipe and the GG comes out. Yeah, tough game for five men Midas. They really weren't able to do very much here. They don't have their normal player stand in situation versus what has become the front runner of the tournament here in Ravens. I mean, it's a tough day. I yeah. feel like one of those uh, serious losses, though, that you can just say, Hey, we probably won or got 2 0 would by the team that is probably going to do pretty well in this tournament. Shake it off. Look at more of, I think, our NA matchups to look forward to. Because at the end of the day in this tournament, you just don't want to be the bottom team. You don't want to be the team that doesn't make playoffs because only one team gets eliminated here. I think Five Men Midas, they've got a lot more to look forward to here. But step one is getting everybody in the, into the lobby. Yeah, absolutely. This is, a, this is a, just a super solid performance from Dad's Terrorblade. Like, this has... To, it's it's hard to say if this is like actually a record on Terrorblade in terms of that Manta timing, but it has to be close. Like this was absolutely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, Ravens looking as strong as they did yesterday and the day before as they now advance to six and zero so far in the tournament, which is pretty wild. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to say. They look great. I'm just excited for our next series though because we do have two more lined up. The next series is going to be featuring the Cut taking on the Wolf team. Then we have Team Dog Champ versus Five Rat Forest to round out the evening. Now, uh, we'll be back after just a short break because there really is not much time to stop here on the BTS Pro Series Season 12. So we'll see you all in a bit. Stay tuned for our second series. Don't go anywhere.